Welcome to the Uinta Quick Start Training. In this video, we will cover the basics related to using Uinta software. More detailed training information can be found at the Uinta product page on the Juniper Systems website. Listed here are the topics we will cover in this video. In addition to an active license, Every user of Uinta requires an account to log into Uinta software. Account logins are typically created in one of a few ways. When purchasing Uinta, when licenses are first assigned to a user, or when starting a trial version of Uinta. Accounts may also be accessed or created directly from the Uinta product page on the Juniper Systems website. If you don't have an account, select Sign Up Now. The good news is, after successful login to Uinta software, users are not required to log in again to use Uinta. Uinta licenses may be managed in the Uinta License Manager. Uinta licenses can be assigned to new users by email address. Users will be notified by email that a license has been assigned to them and prompted to create an account if they don't already have one. Licenses may also be revoked from existing users and reassigned to new users. Each Uinta license by default supports use on two devices at a time. If needed, users may deactivate a device and log in on a new device. If you have more than one license, the total number of devices associated to a subscription may be split across licenses according to your preference. In this example, I have five licenses which support use on 10 devices. I may choose to assign more than two devices to a single login by reserving available device slots to specific licenses, which would then take away active devices from another license. I will demonstrate that later in this video. Uinta may be installed on any Windows or Android device. A typical scenario is that a user will install Uinta on an Office laptop running Windows, plus they may install Uinta Android on a tablet for field data collection and mapping. Download options and instructions can be found on the Juniper Systems website. Uinta Android may also be installed from Google Play by searching Uinta. Once Uinta is installed on a device, use the same login credentials previously created to log into Uinta software on your device. Now that you are logged in and set up with Uinta software, it's time to use Uinta. Okay, next we're gonna demonstrate this process from start to finish, and I would like to do it with a pretend situation where I'm an Office user, I would like to create a project in the Office, share it with my field crew, who's gonna then go out, collect data in the field, and then I'm gonna view that data back in the Office. And so the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to pretend that I just purchased Uinta. I'm going to be at the Uinta product page. Here you can see my account. So when you first purchase Uinta, the next thing you're going to be presented with is the license manager. In my case, I've already logged in here. I'm just going to sign in with my credentials. Now that I've logged into the Uinta license manager, I had purchased five licenses. So one of my licenses has been automatically been assigned to me, but I have four additional licenses here. I know that I'm going to have a field crew that needs to go out and collect data for me, so I'm going to assign a license to one of my field members. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to install Uinta from the Juniper Systems website or from Google Play. In my case, I've already done that, and I have Uinta, but it's a blank screen. If you first start Uinta, you may see some sample projects in here. In my case, I'm going to go to my account and sign in. So this is me, the, the Office user. There you see my license was successfully activated. Now I'm just demonstrating this here, but I've already had other projects here. In your case, you may only see the sample projects, um, but now as the Office user, I wanna create a project. I can create projects from the field, by the way, but in this case, I'm going to start from the Office. And this is gonna be data that we collect at a park. and it's gonna be water assets. I'm going to create the project based on a template, and I'm gonna use a sample template. We just happen to have one for water utilities. So I'm gonna choose that template, and I'm gonna start the project. I'm in the office, I'm not using my GPS. I can X out of this. I'm gonna see what is in this template by selecting the orange plus button. 
And I've got a water line, a valve, a meter, a manhole, or a leak that I could map and collect data on. I also want to collect data on a water drain. And so I'm going to select the edit pencil, add a new record, and I'm going to call it water drain. And this is going to be a point. Maybe I want to change the icon to something different. Now I'm going to select the check. Now notice that I've got a water drain that's been added to my template for this project. If I want to save it as a template for use on future projects, I can do that as well. With this water drain, I can select it. And these are going to be the fields that the users see uh, to collect data about. I may want to add something additional. So I'm going to say add a field. A common one is a select list. I'm going to say select list. And we're going to call this a type. So here we're adding some customization to this water drain uh, record type that the field user is going to collect. And I'm going to select some items. We're going to say type A, type B, type C. So this can be whatever you want. You can allow users to select multiple values. You can allow them to add things to the list. But in my case, I'm just going to use the default values. And maybe I want this type field to be closer to the top. And so now when the users collect data, they're going to have all of this information that they see in their data collection form. I can save this as a template for use on future projects, and it's going to maintain that drain information uh, here. Now, this project is ready to uh, send to my field crew. So the next thing I'm going to do is return to the project list, use the search term to find that particular project, and there it is, park water. And I'm going to select these dots here, and I'm going to manage access to this project. Here, I'm the only user that sees this project when I log into Uinta, but I want to add my field crew user as well. And I just happen to uh, see this email there that I just assigned a license to. Now I'm going to select this. I don't want this field crew to be an admin for this project, so I'm going to leave this checkbox unchecked. But I'm going to check this to share that access with that user. Now I'm ready for my field crew to go out and collect data about those park water assets. And we're going to now pretend that I'm one of those field users and we're going to switch over to a mobile device um, and uh, go collect some data. OK, now I'm going to switch over to pretend that I'm the field user getting ready to collect this data. And the first thing I'm going to do is launch Uinta from my tablet. Next, you see here that I have the Park Water project on this tablet already. When it's first shared with me, I need to download the project to the device. That allows me to collect data locally on the device, even if I don't have an internet connection. I've already downloaded this project to the tablet when I did have an internet connection, and now I'm ready to select the project and begin collecting data. So the first thing that I do as a field user is I like to connect to my GPS and start tracking good satellites and make sure that I have a good position. So on an Android device, uh, from the menu, I'm going to uh, select Connect and Manage GPS. And with Uinta, you can use the internal GPS of your device or Android location services, for example, but you can also connect to an external third-party GPS receiver. In my case, I've have a Juniper Systems geode, which is a high accuracy submeter GPS. All I do is I turn on the geode, it starts tracking satellites. I've already paired it through Bluetooth to my, my tablet. So here it is selected. So I'm now just gonna say connect. Once it connects, you're gonna see some satellite information that you've got a good fix. In this case, I have an accuracy of eight inches, which is pretty typical for the geode and awesome. So I'm just going to select the X and move to the project. I'm going to open the project and here you see my blue dot position uh, and I'm going to first zoom into my position. You can also see that I have a great fix of about seven or eight inches. Uh, so that's a, a really good accuracy position. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to walk over to the water drain because this is a project where I'm collecting water assets and I want to map this drain. You can see it from the from satellite imagery, but I'm also standing over the drain. I select the orange plus button 
I then select Water Drain. At this point, I've already captured that GPS position. You can see the location information below. Um, I'm going to select the type of drain. I'm also going to take a photo of this drain, attach it. Now you see my photo attached, and I'm going to save the project. Now you see this water drain saved on the map. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to walk over and, and collect a, uh, a water meter asset and map it. So here I am. This water meter is up against a building, and I recommend mapping as soon as you can when you get right up to the building for the best accuracy. So I'm going to position my GPS over the meter and select the orange plus button. Now I'm taking a photo of that meter. Everything looks good. I'm going to save it. So in order to map a line or an area, it's the same process. You first want to position yourself at the beginning of that line and select the orange plus button. I selected water line. And there are two methods to capture a line or an area. Either you can use the manual method, which is often the most common for most utilities or for lines that are running straight, but we also have the option for auto. And in the auto situation, you can either uh, add lines to your points on a time interval or a distance interval. You can you know, add it every four seconds or a distance of every four feet. But in our case, I'm going to switch back to the manual method and select start. Now I'm at the beginning of the line and I'm now ready to map a line. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is select the small add button there at the bottom. And that's going to add the first point to this line or the first vertex. Next, I'm going to walk to the end of the line or where the line tees and moves into a different direction. So I'm going to push the small add button again and I'm going to start moving the other direction where this line runs. So the line is moving farther to the west. I'm walking that line, but it's not adding points until I push the add button. And at this point, uh, I'm going to fill out some information about this line. Everything looks good. There's the status of the line looks good. And now I'm just going to save the, the line uh, record type. And there you can see it mapped. Um, I now have a water drain, a water meter, and the water line. Once I've collected all of the data that I want to collect. Uh, the next thing I'm going to want to do is, uh, is make sure that my project is synchronized to the cloud. So if I'm working offline and I don't have an internet connection, I do want to, uh, as a field user, uh, make sure that I connect this device to the internet and open the project. That's going to synchronize everything to the cloud. Um, that way the office user is going to be able to see that data. Once back in the office, I can open Uinta software on my desktop computer, search for the project, and here you notice that there are 10 changes that need to be pulled down to my project onto the desktop. So I'm going to go ahead and sync those now by selecting the three dots and then selecting Cloud Sync. Now, when I open this project, you see all of the field collected data. If I click on it, I will see all the same information that the field users collected. And the next thing I may want to do is look at the data in a list form, and I can see the data all there. But if I switch back to the map view, I can zoom to this location, and I can even export and share this data to a lot of common file formats, including PDF, Excel, Google Earth, KML, Shapefile, GeoPackage, as well as export all of the photo attachments independently. With the PDF export, I can zoom to the location that I want, I can add some custom notes. I may even choose to add my company's logo to this PDF. There is additional advanced features, you know, changing the paper sizes as well as different layout options, but I'm going to export with my standard option here. Export. It's going to generate a PDF map. We're going to open it. It is. Now you see all of your field collected data on a nice professional looking PDF map with a legend, my custom information down below. If I scroll down in subsequent pages, you're going to see all of the field collected data. And that's a really nice export options. 
additional options, it's going to also include all of your field collected data and all the custom notes that you added as well. So for example, here's Excel. Let's open it up. And you're going to see all of your data separated by tabs. And it's going to include all of the different custom information. For example, I collected a water drain with a type B. Um, you're going to see all of that information reflected in your data export as well. Thank you for being a Uinta customer. Additional training and support materials may be found on the Juniper Systems website. For general hardware and software questions, including licenses, contact Juniper Systems tech support.